Okay, so we're, well, let's run through this uh, cascade control. So what do I need first? I'm just gonna draw, yeah, drag a set point over here. I'm, I'm not gonna rename most. I'm not gonna rename most of these just um, for the sake of time. Um, and then we have our sum. And if you guys, you know, when you're dragging these things over, uh, we know we're gonna need two of them anyway. So let's just go ahead and, and do both of them. And then uh, you can also in in Simulink, what, one of the things that you can do is after you've, um, like for example, the plus minus is very common. So what you can do is just Control C, Control. Uh, v and then copy those as well. If you don't want to drag a new, you know, set point over or uh, summation right or something. Click and drag it also oh, right click and drag. Okay, that that works as well. Okay, so let's see. Let's get a um, a transfer function. Now, what do we want for these this transfer function for the uh, inner and uh, outer? I need to save a little bit of room for my next PID controller, right? Actually, those are going to go after this inner loop. Okay, so. Um, here we go. I'll just do I'll just do two of these. One that has a little bit longer time constant. Typically, the outer loop will typically have a you know uh, a little bit longer time constant associated with it, and the inner loop will be a little bit faster. Okay. So what do I need now on this? Okay, I need my PID controllers. All right. So drag those over. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, you know, it's one and one for uh, the default is is one and one for P and I. What do you think would be a good tuning for um, for the inner loop? Okay, a little bit more aggressive. So uh, one and what? So I'm, I'm just thinking about some simple tuning rules. Uh, KC equals one over KP and uh, ta uh, tau i equals tau p. Okay, so that, that's about one and one, right? Okay, so I'll just leave that as, as one and one. Let me construct the the uh, inner loop first. Okay, so what I'll do is just save some of this other stuff for later because I want to tune this one first. Actually, I, I think I have pretty well. Never mind. I'll, I'll just go ahead and leave that there. It just. Um, Let's get a display now, so we get a scope. Okay, grab a scope, and let's just look at the output of this, and then I'll draw this back um, and give it a set point right here. Okay, so now we have our inner loop. Right now, I just kind of moved some of the outer loop stuff out of the way, <laughs> and um, let's go ahead and simulate this and see how well we did in terms of matching up to our set point of what? What was our set point? One. Okay. So how is the performance here? Okay, so it does pretty it does pretty well. Can we go any faster on this? Okay, we could get a little bit faster. Let's do that. Let's just increase our gain. I'm just going to increase it by up to five on that. And maybe just a little bit more integral as well. Okay. So there we go. Let's simulate this again. And okay, take a look. And so how is how is that compared to the other one? Doesn't quite get there as fast. Doesn't get to the set point, does it? It gets closer, but not to the set point. Okay, so let's go ahead and increase our integral uh, just a little bit more. And I'll do 500. Okay. Okay, there we go. We got an integral increase just a little bit more. Okay, so that's uh, that's better. Okay, uh, why is there overshoot there? Integral. integral. Okay, yeah, the integral term caused a little bit of overshoot. You could have a proportional only controller just dial up the gain really, really high, and uh, just for a first order system with no time delay, it would get there very fast. Okay. Okay, yeah, you want to do a slider instead. Okay, so um, let's see. I think it's in signal. Where's the slider, guys? You guys know where the slider is? Okay. Okay, so there's a slider gain. So if you wanted to put um, something like that in there, you just break this. Put a. Uh, so you could change it either way but then you have a slider that you could use to change it. Especially for a simulation that's running, 
you can open this up and then drag it to the left or right okay and be able to change your um, your set point value okay so I'm going to I'm going to take this away for now and uh, we've tuned our inner loop okay and uh, let's just move this scope over to the other side now we're going to do our outer loop okay right click to bring this off and then uh, this is going to this is our outer loop measurement and I'm going to bring this back over compare it to our set point and then have I think I just opened up the PID there okay so uh, bring that over uh, have a, a new PID so what do you guys think on on this one what should the uh, tuning constants be for this outer loop one one. try one and one okay so let's go ahead and try that and um, okay so we're trying to get to a value of one let's go ahead and try to dial up the aggressiveness of this outer loop controller and just see what what's gonna happen here okay so what do you guys think on this one okay so let's just set it equal to something more aggressive than the um, inner loop and just see what happens uh, not too bad okay didn't do too bad actually that's pretty good okay <laughs> Okay, but let's uh, let's add some delay in here, okay, as well, and just see what happens um, when we add some. What is it? Transport delay. Okay, transport delay. And if I drag that in here, if you, you're really careful, it'll just drag it in there for you, in case you don't need to break the lines. And then I'll just have one second of transport delay, and let's just see what that does uh, to the response. Okay, so it went uh, unstable. Okay, yeah, just with one second of transport delay. Okay, so I think I think it's because this is tuned a little too aggressively. Uh, let me, maybe. maybe. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay, so let's let's get this back to. Okay, so maybe we didn't go long enough either. Uh, let me go out to about 50 seconds here. Um, Okay, we could probably continue to improve it a little bit more. Now, you guys know how to get an overall closed loop transfer function for this too, right? Okay, so that's just going to be the uh, inner loop. Okay, you have the inner loop. You can um, have an overall transfer function for the inner loop and just replace that whole inner block there with the transfer function, this G inner loop, and then do the shortcut method as well for the outer loop and get an overall transfer function. So you can actually tell, even before you simulate this, what the response is going to do, okay, mathematically.